Hey, hello, this is um, Richard Miller. I'm <clears throat> associated with the blog Facts Working People and I've made a few um, videos uh, uh, around that and put them on the blog. Um, I'm out in my backyard and I'm <clears throat> I just want to have a few words and say a few words about the question of abortion and politics in general. <clears throat> you know that it's a big shock and it should be a shock that the um, the leaked, uh, the leaked information that the U.S. Supreme Court is going to overturn Roe v. Wade, which is the right of a woman to have an abortion, to seek an abortion, and to be provided with an abortion, and um, that's definitely something that is a is not pos positive. It's a very bad thing, and we have to fight it. Um, but it, as far as the Supreme Court goes, we shouldn't be surprised. It's it's an old. It's a group of old lawyers, or actually old judges, former lawyers. It's a bit like the Politburo of the old Soviet Union, but a, a group that uh, is like the Politburo for the capitalist class in America, in the United, United States. Its job is to defend the interests of capitalism, defend the wealthy, and defend the laws that allow for profit accumulate, capital accumulate, capital accumulation, and profits. That's its role. It's patriarchal capitalism. Capitalism is racist. It's inherently racism is inherent in it. Patriarchy is inherent in it, and it's going to defend that. And so, um, I want to make a couple of comments about that. And so, um, I've taken up the issue of abortion on the blog that I'm connected to. And while I think the first thing any worker has to do and has to say is that, there, firstly, it's a woman's choice and a woman's decision. It's her body. Um, um, uh, uh, so that's key. The second thing is that we, while we fight for the right of a woman to have an abortion, and they try to, uh, I don't think there's any women that have been forced to have an abortion because of Roe v. Ro 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 Wade. If you don't want an abortion, don't have one. But um, the thing is, is that it's a, uh, uh, there's another aspect to it. While we have to fight for the right of a woman to have an abortion and to be provided on demand, we also have to fight for the right of a woman to not have an abortion and to have a child and to not lose her career and to not lose her job and to not lose her, uh, give up her university education and these sort of things and not to be forced to live in poverty. And no matter, while there have been huge gains made uh, uh, when it comes to women's rights, it's still overwhelmingly women that do most of the unpaid labor and do most uh, 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 and, and who are mostly responsible for childcare. So, while we have to fight for the right of a woman to have an abortion, we have to fight for the right of a woman to uh, um, to not be punished. Uh, in other words, society has to help her to raise a child. And from what I've understood, and if you go onto the blog Facts Working People, its URL is we know what's up, no apostrophe dot blogspot dot com. If you go on there, there's some stuff about abortion. We've always taken this position that you have to fight for these two things. And they're not separate. Because, and also, the right to have an abortion is not separate from economics. And it's not separate from class. If you've seen the, the movie um, Vera Lake, Vera Drake, about this woman in the post-war era in England who provided abortions to women that got pregnant mostly from American soldiers and I when I was in Australia I did an interview with a woman in the Green Party who told me that there's 50,000 or something children of American troops in, in the Philippines who are trying to get uh, American citizenship because they just pissed off after impregnating women there so this happens all over the world it's not just an American thing and it's not just Americans so we have to fight for those two things and you know I was in AFSME which is a fairly large public sector union and over 50% women at the time that I was in it. And I took up that issue in, in, and the issue of domestic violence uh, up to the international level. I introduced re resolutions at the international level. And the, the, uh, there was a, there's all a tendency, and there was at the first Labour Party convention after Mazzocchi, who's dead now, uh, they had a Labour Party convention in uh, Cleveland, I believe it was, in 1996. I was a delegate there. <coughs> they want to leave that question alone. It's too delicate. Well, why is it too delicate? Why is uh, that uh, uh, the fight against racism not so delicate and a woman's right to, to uh, choose not de uh, so delicate? And in AFSCME, they tried to stay away from it. But the thing is, we shouldn't stay away from it. It's, it's harder to fight for it when you only talk about the right 
to choose because it's complicated for some women. I have a lot of women friends who won't have abortions. Some of them are Catholic and uh, others, it's a complicated choice. I don't have to make that bloody decision. We have to respect that. They're not all right wing nuts. And so what we have to say is a woman has a right to have an abortion and not suffer economically and everything else for it. Not to be left with that result, not to give up her life because she has a baby. And, and so that's an important aspect of it. And I was listening to a discussion on the internet about a local politician, uh, um, and, uh, uh, and it was uh, uh, a couple of people, some of them I know, are condemning this politician because he didn't take the position, uh, an open position or a strong enough position on a gay marriage and on, on the abortion question. I'm going to stay away from the gay marriage question. I support gay marriage. What, why would I have a problem with people that love each other getting married and have the same rights as anybody else? That's a given. On the question of abortion, he's apparently waffling and everything else. I don't support these people. In, in, uh, I don't support Democrats and Republicans anyway. So, But, but the question is, if we just isolate it to the right to a woman's choice, we undermine our struggle against it because it's connected to economics that's the main thing and so we have to bring up if you take these politicians that they're criticizing and rightly so for not taking a stand on this what's their position on the minimum wage what's their position on job losses and layoffs what's their position on all these social social democratic issues on on social issues on housing uh, like social housing on health care and free health care out free health care. It's not free because we pay taxes. But on health care, what's their position? You have to link those two. You see what I'm saying? You have to link those two. And I remember when I was in AFSME, I had a platform uh, around that question. You should have on-site child care in every, in, every, in every workplace so that a woman or a man, if it had to be that, can have a child, can, uh, can go, to, co go to work. There's child care there. It doesn't break them. It's a, it's a massive expense for families today. And they can go down and visit their children in, in, in the meantime, in the lunchtime or so forth. It has to be incorporated into our daily lives, our work life and our, and our personal life. So you can't, you can't just, you'll never get, you, the, the issue has to be linked to economics. And why I say that is that everywhere these identity issues, and that is an identity issue in a sense, if you just leave it on its own, they can't win. And, and I've gotten into it there's, uh, with some friends about this issue. But the, the, uh, and, and within the black community in particular, there is a, or I've been following, there is a movement among black intellectuals, black activists, uh, who are struggling against this idea that uh, the struggle against racism is simply a struggle against racism. It's a racial question alone. And it is not a racial question alone. If you look at all the, the weakening of the unions, the undermining of social programs, all of these things have affected, affected black people more than white people. Because uh, uh, today I think the percentage of black workers in unions is greater. A black worker in a union, a black a woman in a union, a black woman in a union has a better life. She has more financial security and so forth. So you can't separate the struggle around these things from the struggle uh, for the importance of uniting working people, of strengthening organizations. That means fighting a struggle within the trade union movement against the concessionary right-wing pro-market policies of the trade union leadership today because because overwhelmingly the loss of union power the undermining of social programs the undermining of social of, of public sector jobs like i had that has had a huge effect on 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 marginalized populations a greater effect than it has on whites but we should not underestimate the effect it's had on the white population when i have been here for 50 years the white working class has been savage in 50 years. It's much harder to point to them as, look, you've got privilege, and yes, you have the advantage, and so forth, than it was 50 years ago. And the identity people do that. The identity people do that. West Virginia and parts of the United States among the white population, it's a goddamn basket case. Let's, so you have to deal with that, and that's a class question. And I, was, I wanted to, in that book I showed you there, that, that when I say about the, among the, there's a struggle against this identity stuff, look at um, uh, people I'm thinking in mind is uh, Adolf Reed, his son uh, Torre Reed, who's written a book called Toward Freedom, 
uh, the struggle against um, r race reductionism. And also Cedric Johnson, who I'm a little less familiar with, but I'm reading some of his stuff, is Adolf Reed was barred from, um, well, he was de-platformed or de-invited to speak at a DSA meeting by the what, what I would consider black, petty bourgeois caucus in it, uh, because he, 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 he said that there's too much time spent against racism, uh, on the issue of racism, and not enough against class. He's absolutely correct. He's absolutely correct about this. And this, and then they try to accuse him of he class. You're a race reductionist. I've been called that. I'm a, I've been called I'm a workerist and a race reductionist. That's nonsense, and it's nonsense for him too. And in Tory Reid's book, he makes the same points as as, as Johnson does in his. That the, the struggle of the black population and the black working class is connected to the struggle of all other elements and all other groups in society. And and and, and it's a class question. And the the uh, remember. Uh, in no, 2006, when 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 um, Latinos stopped work for 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 24 hours, and some say it wasn't a general strike. Some say it was. It doesn't matter. I think there were two million people out on the streets. I was involved in those marches. I was involved. So what happened? The Latino petty bourgeois who's trying to advance the, the Latino petty bourgeois and capitalist class trying to advance his position within the framework of capitalism they enter it the catholic church enters it to to temper it to ensure that it, it does not threaten capitalism to sh and ensure that it doesn't break from the democratic party and uh, 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 and so forth the same happened after seattle i was involved in the direct action against the war after seattle same thing trade union officialdom sent in its trendy uh, 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 staffers with the right shoes or right on the gender issues on the environmental uh, environmental issues everything to temper that movement and ensure that it gets dragged into the democratic party and rendered powerless you know so uh, uh, um, uh, 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 johnson points out here in relation to black lives matter now that was a powerful movement. I supported it, and I think it's a good thing when it began. But it has to broaden out. But but exactly, he says here. Look, he says it was a the moment was a trans, triumph for Black Lives Matter activists. But it was already clear that once the uh, the plumes of tear gas dissipated and compassion fatigue set in, the real beneficiaries would be the neoliberal Democrats and the capitalist blocs they have served. Indeed, nearly all of the democratic leadership who, quote, took a knee against racist, polit uh, racist policing have openly opposed Medicare for all, free, free higher education, and the expansion of other public goods. And, and, and you can see all the money that was sent to Black Lives Matter, Apple, and all the, the books. They came into the universities, to black businesses, to black banks. It's to try and strengthen that black middle class who can say to the black, the black working class and its revolu revolutionary potential, work within the system, look at me, we can make it. And that happened, I remember, when Yusuf Hawkins was killed out there in Queens and, um, and the black population of New York shut down the subways and, and out d comes Dinkins, oh, calm down, calm down, we can make it, look at me. No, you can't. We can't. Capitalism, we're in late-stage capitalism. There is no solution through the Democratic Party to these problems, only through uh, 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 the fight, the struggle against uh, the, the, uh, against uh, for uh, our needs, our social needs, and everything else, and of course the right for gay people to marry, for for for, for gender, for against trans uh, trans uh, uh, violence and so forth. Anybody in a, a marginalised community has the same should have the same right as anybody else. Uh, okay, it's just very simple. And I remember uh, 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 when I ran for city council in Oakland. Uh, it was. 1996, and I spoke to a group in Fruitvale, and it was a $10 an hour minimum wage. And you know what? That audience, which was very multi-ethnic, was split. On one side were small business and others, and on the other side were workers of all genders and all bloody colours and all races and religions who wanted to get paid the $10 an hour minimum wage. That's the key division in society, and that's the product of capitalism. Well, these are a few words. You know how I always do. So I hope it, um, if anyone wants to send some comments in or comment on about this or share it on YouTube, I would appreciate it. And if you want to disagree with it, that's fine. Anyway, Richard Mella, Facts of Working People. That's it for today. I'm out in the garden. It's a hot day. Take care.